So this is a question in which a block is being held against a wall that has a kinetic um, coefficient of friction of 0.25 and it's being held against the wall with a force P that is at 30 degrees with the vertical. And this block um, has a weight of 39 newtons. And the question is, if the block is moving up the wall with a constant velocity or down the wall with a constant velocity, what is the value of P, the force, in each case? Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw the free body diagram in both cases. So here's the block. The first thing I know is that it has some weight, and I know that that weight is 39 newtons. P, of course, is being applied, and um, I could draw P just as is, or I could draw the components of P in the X and Y. So my choice for X is going to be this way, to be positive. Choice for Y is going to be up, to be positive. And I could draw P at 30 degrees with the vertical, like this, and then analyze it into the components. Or for the free body diagram, I can just straight up draw the components of P. So P makes an angle of 30 degrees with the vertical. So that means that it's going to be P cosine theta, which is 30 degrees in the positive Y cosine, because that's the adjacent to the vertical. And then the horizontal is opposite to the angle. So that's going to be the sine and it's pointing towards the wall. Now, because it's pointing towards the wall um, for the horizontal, the wall is going to respond with a normal force. And because there is a normal force on the wall, then there is friction force. And in this case, because the box is moving up, the friction is opposing the movement, so the friction is going to be down. The force due to friction is going to be down. Okay? Similarly, I can draw the free body diagram for when it's going down the wall. And pretty much everything is going to be the same except that the friction is going to be pointing up. But I'm going to repeat what I said just so that uh, it's... Maybe if you miss something the first time, um, you'll see how it's done again. So I'm choosing my X and Y. This is a free body diagram, so I'm going to represent the block with just a point. And I'm looking at the forces that are being exerted on the block. So the first force that is exerted on the block is the force of gravity. The Earth is pulling the block down right, with 39 newtons. And P, the force P, is at an angle. So I'm just going to resolve that into the components. So there's a component horizontal in the positive X. And that is P sine 30, because 30 is the angle with the vertical. And the vertical up is going to be P cosine 30. Because there is a force on the wall, the wall is going to respond with a normal force. And because there is a normal force, there would be friction, because it's not a frictionless wall, and because there is a normal force that is non-zero. And we know that the friction force is equal to the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal force. The coefficient of friction is 0.25, and the block is moving downwards, so the force of friction opposes the movement, the sliding of the block, the two surfaces sliding against each other. The force of friction opposes that slide on the block. The block is moving down with respect to the wall, so that means the friction force from the wall on the block is going to be up. The force from the block on the wall, the friction one, is going to be down but the force from the wall on the block is going to be up. And this is the force of friction 
and we know that it's going to be equal to mu k multiplied by the normal force. Okay, so let's solve in both cases. Let's solve the equations, um, the second law of Newton, the equation of motion. Okay, so um, in the case that is going up the wall, first of all, I got to figure out whether it's in equilibrium in x and, and whether it's in equilibrium in y. The block is not moving anywhere in x, so it's at rest in x, so that means it's in equilibrium in x. So that means in x, uh, the net force in x is going to be zero because it's in equilibrium in x because it's at rest in x. It's moving with a constant velocity in y, so that means there is no acceleration in y, so that means their net force in y is going to be equal to zero. Remember, the net force is equal to mass times acceleration. And because there is no acceleration in y, because the velocity is constant, then it's also in equilibrium in y. So these are the two equations of motion in this case. And when we solve them, uh, we're going to find what p is. The same thing applies in the down the wall case. So these two equations apply in the down the wall case because the same scenario is still, still applies. It's in equilibrium in x because it's at rest in x. And it's in equilibrium at y because it's moving at a constant velocity. There is no acceleration in y. OK, so let's solve these equations. The first one says I'm in equilibrium in x. So in the case that I'm going up the wall, that means that the normal force plus vectorially plus the uh, p sine theta force are going to be equal to zero vectorially. So that means because they're opposite direction, then their magnitudes are going to be equal. So then I know that the magnitude of the normal force is going to be equal to the magnitude of p sine theta. Now, in a vectorial sense, fn plus p sine theta is equal to zero. However, because vectorially these are in opposite directions, so if I'm writing an x hat, these two are in opposite directions. So if I'm just talking about magnitudes, these are going to be equal magnitudes. Okay. Now if I'm talking about the y piece, I'm going to look at all the things in y. I'm going to write that the vectorial sum of all the things in y is going to be equal to zero. So that means anything that is pointing in positive y, I'm going to give a positive sign. Anything that is pointing in negative y, I'm going to give a negative sign. I'm going to sum that to zero. So these are two different ways of basically saying the same thing. When we were talking in x, I was thinking vectorially, these add up to zero. Or you could think in terms of whatever is pointing along x, I'm going to give a positive sign. Whatever is pointing along negative x, I'm going to give a negative sign. So that would mean that p sine theta minus fn is equal to 0. So that means that p sine theta is equal to fn. So we could do that in the y direction. So I could say that p cosine theta, because that's pointing in positive, I could say that that's equal to everything that's pointing in the negative. Or I could say minus the 39 newtons minus fk, the friction force. I know that the friction force is equal to the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal force. So that's equal to um, mu k multiplied by the friction by the normal force. And these things sum up to zero because we're in equilibrium in y. I know what the normal force is from the x equation, so I can just sub that in. So then I know that p cosine theta minus 39 newtons minus 0.25 multiplied by the normal force, which is p sine theta, is equal to 0. These two terms are common in p, so I'll take p in common cosine theta minus 0.25 sine theta is equal to 
39 newtons. I just added 39 newtons to both sides. So that means that P is equal to 39 newtons divided by cosine theta minus 0.25 sine theta. And because theta is 30 degrees, then I'm going to plug 30 degrees in here, cosine 30 minus quarter of sine 30, 39 divided by that, then I'm going to get that it's going to be something like 52.6 newtons. I could do the same thing down the wall. So I'm going to do it again. From the equilibrium in X, I know that these two forces are going to be equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. Or I could write it this way. I could write everything that is in positive X, P sine theta, P sine 30 degrees, minus everything that is in minus X in terms of magnitude is going to be equal to zero, which also tells me that Fn is equal to P sine 30, just like in the other case. And then when I'm doing the Y part, I'm looking at everything that's in the positive Y. So P cosine 30 plus coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal force And then everything that's in the negative gets a negative sign. So minus 39 newtons is equal to zero. So that means then that if I take the common, the P cosine 30 plus 0.25 sine 30 is equal to 39. And that means that P is equal to 39 newtons divided by this factor, cosine 30 plus quarter times sine 30. And that's equal to, comes out to something like 39.35 newtons. So notice that in the end, the difference in the P force came down to the sine of the friction force in here. It was negative in the one case because the force was pointing down due to friction and it was positive in this case because the force was pointing up.